Let's talk about profit, or in your case, the complete lack thereof, famously. <laughs> hey, let's just establish this once and for all. Can Amazon make money? Well, um, yes, and, and in fact, we have uh, in the past. You have to understand, there are many ways of thinking about this, but the reality is uh, that Amazon is a collection of several businesses and initiatives. And we have some very significant, uh, very profitable, uh, more established businesses that are free cash flow generating very significantly. And then fortunately, the way I think about it, we have lots of opportunities to invest in new initiatives and we take advantage of those opportunities. So it's kind of like we built this lemonade stand you know, 20 years ago. The lemonade stand has become very profitable over time. But we also uh, decided to use our skills and the assets that we've acquired over time to open a hamburger stand and a hot dog stand and so on and so on. So we're in, in investing in new initiatives. And, and this is certainly what your investors who've been with you for a long time fervently believe. And you ask them, like, why, why doesn't it bother you the way it bothers some people that the company's not profitable and has an infinite PE and all Look, this you, stuff? Look, uh, you know, Warren Buffett has this great quote. He says, you can hold a rock concert, and that's OK. And you can hold a ballet, and that's OK. Just don't hold a rock concert and advertise it as a ballet. Investors come in all shapes and sizes. They have different investment horizons, different approaches, different uh, beliefs about what the right kind of portfolio uh, looks like. And uh, so it's not one, you know, people use Wall Street as a shorthand, but there isn't one type of investor. They come in all shapes and sizes. And you have to be super clear about what kind of company you're trying to build, what your approach is. We laid that out in our 1997 annual shareholder letter. We said we were going to take big bets. We said they were going to fail. We said some of them hopefully were going to work. Uh, we said we were going to invest for the long term, that we were going to uh, try to take advantage of mar market opportunities as they arose. And there's a certain kind of investor who is aligned with that approach. And so again, you can hold the ballet or the rock concert, and both can work. Um, just be clear about which one you are, and then people can self-select. And so lots of CEOs, I'm sure, would like to learn from you how is it that I can not be at all profitable and still have an incredibly high stock price on, by some measures? W what is your advice? Is it spend many years explaining we're never going to earn a penny because we're going to be reinvesting it? I would say you know, it's very difficult for uh, a publicly traded company to switch. So if you've been holding a rock concert and then you want to have a ballet, that transition is going to be difficult. Um, but if you've done it from the very beginning, and uh, then I think it's not that difficult to do. Um, look, um, we would all love all of our numbers to be smooth lines up and to the right, and uh, that would be terrific. But that's not how it works. You know, um, you know the, those numbers are, are output measures. And you, I mean, I guess you could try to manage your quarterly earnings very precisely. But I think personally that would be a mistake. You know, most of the work that we put into um, any particular quarter happened years ago. So it's not, you know, there's, there aren't that many knobs you can turn during a quarter. I mean, you can, but they're, very, they're like eating your seed corn if you turn those knobs. You don't want to do that. And so uh, it's, it's uh, uh, I, you know, people, uh, I think if you focus on the controllable inputs to your business instead of the outputs, in the long term, you get better results. So the, the Benjamin Graham quote here is that in the short term, the stock market is a voting machine. In the long term, it's a weighing machine. And I think people are well advised to build a company that wants to be weighed and not voted upon. And that means having good return on invested capital and having you know, uh, lots of free cash flow. But if you said to me, if I said, here's a job I would reject. If somebody came up to me and said, Jeff, I want your job to be to um, uh, drive up the Amazon stock price and just manage that directly. Now, this might sound ridiculous to some of you, but many companies actually do this. They, have, they actually go out and they try to sell the stock. That's kind of the final output. And it's much better to say, OK, let's not do that. That's not going to be sustainable. It's kind of a silly approach. Um, what are the inputs 
to a higher stock price. And you say, okay, well, free cash flow and return on invested capital are inputs to a higher stock price. Okay, so let's, let's, let's keep working backwards. What are the inputs to free cash flow? And you keep working backwards until you get to something that's controllable. And a controllable input for free cash flow would be something like lower cost structure. And then you, you back up from there and you say, okay, well, you know, if we can improve our picking efficiency in our fulfillment centers and reduce defects, defects are very, very costly. It's probably, you know, reducing defects at the root is one of the best ways to lower cost structure. And so if you, then that starts to be a job you would accept. You would say, if you're, you know, a reasonable person, you would say, I have no idea how to, uh, drive up the stock price. I can't manage that directly. It's not a controllable input, but I, I can make your picking algorithms more efficient, and that will reduce cost structure. And then you know, follow that chain all along the way. That's what you do in all of these businesses. You 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 want you know customer obsession. You want to invent your way out of boxes. You want to invent your way into the future. You want to be patient, and you want to have operational excellence, uh, so that you're finding defects at the root and fixing them. You talk about what a lot of CEOs do in terms of trying to drive up the stock price, selling the stock. You told me something when we were outside, extraordinary, which is that you spend six hours a year yeah. on investor relations. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we do a lot of things unusual uh, there. So you know, we don't meet with our biggest investors. We meet with investors who have low portfolio turns. So uh, uh, you know, Investors that have, you know, many investors, many investment funds have very high portfolio turns. They turn their portfolio multiple times per year. They're not really investors, they're traders. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a different thing. But where are you going to spend your time and your energy is one of the most important decisions you get to make in life. We all have a limited amount of time, and where you spend it and how you spend it is, is uh, just an incredibly levered way to think about the world. And so if you're going to spend time, you know, uh, explaining the stock or the, or the company, really. We don't really explain the stock. We explain the company to people. You should do it to people who are long-term investors um, rather than traders. That's our point of view. And what do you say to employees when you ha obviously have some traders in the stock who are not happy and suddenly the stock is down 25% after a quarter? Well, I, so for, well, since 1997, at almost every all hands meeting, we have two all hands meetings a year. At almost every all hands meeting, I remind employees that you know if the stock is up 10% this month, don't feel 10% smarter, because when the stock is down 10% some month, you're going to have to feel 10% dumber, and it's not going to feel as good. And so it's you know ownership is uh, we give most of our compensation uh, is, is done in terms of uh, stock compensation. And, uh, uh, and part and parcel with ownership is a mentality of, of long-term thinking. You know, you, owners think longer term than renters do. That really was an incredible drop of information from Jeff Bezos. I really do love his insight, especially here when he explains really the ins and outs of Amazon, the stock market itself. And so if you want more Jeff Bezos content, remember to leave it in the comments. I want to hear from everybody. Remember to leave a like and also subscribe. If you can't subscribe, then I cannot continue making videos just like this one for all of you out there. Thank you so much for watching, everybody, and I will see you in the next video.